just doing a couple uh, throwing demos. So um, I kind of have the camera bent down a little bit here so you can really see what I'm going to be working on. And then I also have an overhead camera that can um, look down into the pot. So um, what, in, what I'm going for here, I'm going to throw a large bowl. Um, this is five and a half pounds of, of terracotta clay and I've already wedged it which means I've prepared the clay by getting all of the air bubbles out of it. It's very similar to um, kneading dough, except with kneading dough, you're putting air into the dough. Um, with uh, wedging clay, you're taking the air out of it. So we want all of the air bubbles out of it. So I've got my clay on the wheel here and I'm gonna um, start to throw. So when you're wedging, excuse me, when you're throwing large amounts of clay, um, what helps me is I like to actually center the clay in um, two steps. So I'll center the top first. This just means I'm getting the clay to go, to stop wobbling and be right in the center of the wheel. So you can see I just took the top part and centered that, and then I'm gonna grab the bottom part and pull that up towards the top. Um, for me, it just makes it a little bit easier to center these larger chunks of clay, which five and a half pounds is pretty large. Even though when I'm looking at my screen here, it looks much smaller than it feels. So I'm just squeezing, putting pressure on the clay, making sure my body is staying, um, the muscles are staying contracted so I can get the clay all going in the same direction. So centering is a major part of throwing on the pottery wheel. Um, it's about 75% of um, the process. So um, especially with these larger chunks of clay, it really does take some time. So this bowl that I'm throwing, it's actually going to be a mixing bowl, the little spout. And what I like to do is I like to make the base or the bottom of the bowl a little bit more narrow so that it kind of has a little, a little base and then comes out like that, like a nice, good size mixing bowl. I'm adding water as I'm throwing. This is so that my hands don't stick to the clay. Okay, almost there. So basically, I like to just kind of feel the clay and see if it's wobbling at all. It will start to wobble as you're throwing, especially a larger pot. Um, so you want to make sure that you start with clay that's not wobbling too much because it, it will just naturally start to go off center and wobble a little bit, which makes it difficult to throw. So that's why it's important to just be patient with this part, make sure your clay is definitely centered. All right, so I think this looks pretty good. There's a tiny bit of a wobble, but it really doesn't feel bad to me. It doesn't feel like it's gonna make anything go awry. Okay. Before I move on to my next step, I really like to clean off my hands. <laughs> Um, this is just so that I can feel the clay, feel what I'm doing as I'm working with it. It's just kind of a habit I got into. I often in class call it uh, giving yourself a little sponge bath. All right, so this next step is called opening. So um, I'm just gonna push down into the center. So I'm gonna push down and I'm gonna estimate about a quarter of an inch on the floor of the pot. 
So I'm gonna stop my wheel. So I've estimated, now I'm actually gonna check. I'm gonna use my pin tool here. Go right into the center, put my finger where the clay is. And I can see it's about a quarter of an inch, which is good. Maybe a little more, but that's okay. And then you wanna just start your wheel back up, push down to just fill in that little pinhole that we made. And then we're gonna to continue to open. So I'm gonna pull open towards six o'clock, making sure my hands are wet. Okay, so the trick to that is to make sure that you're leaving your left hand on the outside of the clay and keeping this hand nice and sturdy. Really get it against your body and um, make sure that your hand doesn't move too much because what you're doing is you're moving that clay into your palm and then it's making sure that the clay is staying centered. And then the other thing you wanna make sure is, so I check the depth in the center, but as you're pulling open, you wanna make sure that this whole floor stays the depth that you checked, which is a quarter of an inch. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna start in the center on the bottom here. And what I'm doing right now is recompressing the floor. So the reason we do this is because you can get cracking. We just like put the clay through a lot of stress by pulling it out quickly like that. So you wanna make sure that all those molecules are lined back up. I'm really pushing down. Here's another part that you really don't want to get impatient about because nothing's worse than taking something out of the bisque fire or while something's drying, it getting a nice S crack in the bottom. It's terrible. Sometimes cracks even come out in the second firing, which is the glazed fire. So you'll think everything's fine, you'll fire it, everything looks good, you'll glaze it and then put it into the glaze fire which is um, into the kiln and it comes out with a crack in it so that all stems from um, throwing from these parts maybe you're also adding too much water so as you can see I'm adding water in to make sure my hands are not sticking but then I'm also taking that water out so there's not just sitting water in the bottom of my pot if you get an air bubble at the bottom here you would stop your wheel and just pop the air bubble with your pin tool. I say that because I usually have air bubbles in the bottom and I don't right now, which is pretty cool. All right, you can see how many times I've been compressing this. So when I was in school, what I was taught is to compress at least 10 times. So that's, I usually do 10 times and then some. Okay. All right, so you wanna just make sure the bottom of the pot is nice and flat and compressed, and then we can go back in before we're done and just make sure it looks how we want it to. So from the overhead view, you can see that it, there's swirls in the bottom. If you don't want that, you can go back in and get rid of them at the end. So before I start pulling up, which is the really fun magical part, I can feel that there is a air bubble. So I'm just gonna stop my wheel, poke it with my pin tool. And when you get them early, it's really good because then um, they have more time to work themselves out. Okay, so we're gonna, the next step is called pulling. So we're gonna make a pull. Um, what I'm doing is, so this, this wall thickness right now is like an inch and a half. We wanna um, get it down to a little bit thinner. And obviously this is gonna make our, shape our pot and make it larger. So I'm using the sponge on the outside, making sure I have a good amount of water on everything. Starting at the bottom, squeezing my fingers together and just making a nice smooth pull up. And then I'm gonna recompress the lip, which means I'm just pushing down with my right hand and I'm pinching with my left hand. So that was just one pull. Now you don't want to squeeze too hard on the first pull. We want to gradually um, thin this clay out. All right, so then we're gonna start at the bottom again. Just 
please. Nice smooth pull and then recompress the lip. So can you see how there's a little bit of a wobble at the top? I'm not concerned about it, but as we're making this larger and larger, it's gonna make it feel like the wobble is worse and worse, which can throw you off sometimes. That's why you wanna make sure that you really center it in the beginning. I am getting all of the water out of the inside. Kinda of checking on that bubble that I popped earlier just to see if it's still there, which I think it is. So I'm just gonna pop that again. Whoops, don't do that. Pop that. Okay, all right, add some more water and then we're gonna pull again. Okay, so as I mentioned before, I'm gonna have a more narrow base and then the bowl is gonna come out like this. Um, when you first start throwing, it might be a little bit harder to have a plan, but um, once you start throwing larger and more often, you kind of want to have an idea of what you're going to, what you're going to throw. Um, what was I going to say about this? Oh, if the other thing is that I'm going straight up and down right now, because if I brought this bowl out right away, right when I started making my first pulls, by the end of it, it's going to be way out here. And once it's out, it cannot start going back in. So you want to be careful of that. All right. it's starting to take shape okay so this next pull is when I'm actually gonna start shaping a little bit more like how I want it and the reason is I kind of want to get my wall thickness set up a little bit because once you get the shape to where you want it you really don't want to mess with it too much more after that So now we're starting to get that wider mouth and then the more narrow base. As you can probably hear until I am slowing down the wheel a bit. All right, so this is my plan. I'm gonna do one more, one more pull um, to shape it and thin out the wall. And then I'm gonna use some ribs, which I'll show you what those are, to shape it a little bit more and get rid of some of these throwing rings. The throwing rings are from my fingers. Okay, nice. Also, if you're throwing something large like this, don't be afraid to, and you think it might be getting too wet or it's gonna flop over or something, don't be afraid to just let it be for a couple hours. You can like walk away from it and just let it dry and then go back to it. Okay. So I have two ribs here. These are rubber ribs, known as rubber ribs. There's also metal ribs and there's wooden ribs. But um, this red one's a little bit more bendy and this green one's not as bendy, but we're gonna use both of them. Maybe, we'll see. Sometimes I go to, I go to um, use the ribs and I find that it's making, it's causing problems rather than helping me. So I'm gonna use the bendy one on the outside and the more stiff one on the inside. Okay. 
to it. So like this inside one, it's not doing it for me. So I'm just gonna use my fingers. Sometimes I'll use a sponge. Nice and slow. So I'm really getting down here. I'm making sure that the profile, so the side of the pot, is what I want it to be. Make sure looking a little more rounded. Okay. I think that's a pretty nice mixing bowl. Um, I'm gonna actually stop here after I do a couple things because I, if this pot gets too wet, it'll just flop over, and I can go back in and fix some things as I, as it, after it dries a little bit. Okay, just a couple things that I want to do before I'm done. So this is a stick tool, um, and you just want to get the bottom. With the stick tool, I, what I'm doing is I'm getting off this extra clay, but then it also gives me a nice sharp line. So when I have to go back and trim the bottom, which is when you you wait until the pot's a little bit more dry and then trim off the excess clay on the bottom, um, it gives you a nice clean line so that you don't have to um, worry about recentering or anything. Okay, then I have a piece of chamois here. And I'm just gonna make sure that the lip is nice and rounded. I usually leave a little bit thicker of a lip on a mixing bowl. As we know, they kind of get banged around a little bit. So you wanna make sure that the lip is a little bit thicker and it's gonna be able to withstand, you know, mixing and, uh, this is actually a good size for a salad bowl too. Mixing, maybe bringing salad somewhere for a party. All right, I'm just cutting off the bottom and then I will leave this until tomorrow when I will let it dry out and trim it up. Can't even see myself. All right, well, thanks for watching. And even though you couldn't see my head, hopefully um, you enjoyed the demonstration and thanks for tuning in and um, being part of the super sad art day with us. The Anton Art Center would like to thank the following businesses and organizations for their financial support of Super Sad Art Day activities. Presenting sponsor, First State Bank. Supporting sponsor, Consumers Energy. The Michigan Humanities Council. The Michigan Council for Arts and Cultural Affairs. The Kresge Foundation. The Community Foundation for Southeast Michigan. And the National Endowment for the Arts. We would also like to thank our partners, the Discovery Center, the Detroit Institute of Arts, and the Metropolitan Detroit Corral. Learn more about the Anton Art Center and our partners at www.theartcenter.org and make a donation to support our mission to enrich and inspire people of all ages through the arts.